Raina, you all know her. She's the digital media manager for the National Press Foundation. She's been with us for less than a year, but before that, she was a photographer at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. Uh, she worked as a project assistant to the art, an artist and curator in Israel. She is a graduate of the Corcoran College of Art and Design. She has a master's degree in new media and photojournalism. Previous to that, she got a bachelor's in photography and Middle East studies from Smith College. She has made um, a documentary video, and she manages all of the digital media here at NPF. So we are really glad that she's part of our organization and that she had a few minutes to talk to you today about this very important topic. Raina Levy. Thank you, Linda. Um, so this presentation is based on shooting video if you're shooting on a smart device. I'm not going to go into talking about anything to do with your HDSLR or um, camcorder. Um, so the first thing is, I would say that the, the biggest mistake, first mistake that I see people make when they're shooting video is they start shooting their, um, taking their smart device and shooting in portrait format. If you start doing that, you really can't use the footage that on um, to work with any other project because any project that uses an HDSLR, unless it's some fine art installation, is going to be shot in landscape format. So, for better integration purposes and um, to make it easier on you, uh, shoot your smart device in landscape. Um, one of the things that Alba's video, Alba's video that we saw t earlier today, I don't know where she is, but um, it was really great, but I also saw that she made, she had her subject in the middle, sort of in the middle of the video screen, which can be really, which can be nice stylistically if you decide that that is a kind of style, but generally it's good to put your subject on one side of the screen, generally on in one third of the portion of the video if you were to split the landscape portion of the video up into three parts put your subject on the farthest left or right third of the, of the screen and um, put your light so source off to one side. So it can be on the left or right side. It, this can be any kind of light source. I can ta I'll talk more about light sources in a minute, but basically the only light source that you don't want or want to try to avoid is a fluorescent light, light source right from above. Basically, what we have in this. <laughs> Basically, what you have in any office building. Um, one thing that is confusing for subjects and for people taking the video is sometimes the subject will not know where to look, and so they end up looking in the camera, or they end up sort of their eyes wandering, and that makes for, can be kind of an awkward experience for the viewer. It's best practice to just get that out of the way and give your, um, give your interviewee some instruction early on and say, okay, I'm going to stand off to this side of the screen and you can just look at me and we'll just have a conversation and that way the, um, the person doesn't get confused and it looks better. Where you stand off camera depends on what side of the screen you have your subject on. So, for instance, if you had your subject on the left side, you don't want them looking off camera, off to the left side, off. You want them looking into the negative space that you've created by putting your subject on one side of the screen. Does that make sense? So um, if you stand, if, so if I'm shooting my video and I don't, and I'm, I'm shooting Lisa right here, and Lisa's going to be on the left side, the side of my screen here, I'm going to stand off to this side and say, okay, you and I can have a conversation so that you're looking off into the negative space that's created on the screen. <coughs> Just some few tips on lighting. Never shoot your subject if the light is just coming, pouring in from behind your subject on a smart, light, a smart device. Seems pretty straightforward. If the space that you're, like this, if the, someone was sitting on this, on this uh, air thing, then 
it would be really problematic because the light is coming in directly from behind them and it's particularly dark in this room. And so the contrast between the light outside and the low light in here will create this kind of like weird halo blurring effect on your smart device and the picture won't be very clear. Try not to shoot in low light situations with your smartphone. It just doesn't do very well. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be best if you could even take your subject outside in order to uh, get some better light or put your subject next to a window. Don't put your subject directly below a fluorescent light source. It creates bags under your eyes and they might not ever allow you to interview them again. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just look really bad. If you are, uh, if the main purpose of your interview is to get audio from the interview, then audio will be your priority in placing where your smartphone goes. It, it, the microphones in these aren't, they aren't that powerful. And so especially if you're in a really loud or crowded area, you're gonna have to put this really close to, to where your subject is speaking. Um, if you're in a quiet room, uh, you can get maybe three or four feet of distance out of using your smart device. And you know, don't put your subject next to a heating or cool vent. If, um, and if you're, and if you really are only doing audio interviews, then I really suggest using a separate audio recorder, separate from this. Even if you do end up shooting video on this, the um, I'll go over the recorders in a in a minute. But the recorder that I use there is really powerful, and it's um, it really gives you a lot of bang for your buck. If you're outside and you have to shoot outside, and you're having sound issues because of wind, you can position yourself between the smart device and your subject so that you're blocking the microphone from the wind and that really um, can cut down on wind noise. Again, if you're really relying on the audio and there's, you're outside trying to record on this with a lot where there's a lot of wind, you probably should just get yourself uh, an external audio recorder. So, a ba so this is the basic setup. You can, I sometimes if I'm recording on a smart device for anything, uh, I'll do something as simple as like putting, just putting my smart device on a desk or just placing it, placing it on a tripod, balancing it somewhere, using desks or tables to help me. Um, so if you have your subject in the middle of your setup, you have your light source coming from one side and you have your microphone on the other side if you have an external microphone and you have your smart device on here that should be the most basic bare bones setup that you would ever need to use for this and uh, you know if, you, if it's impossible to put your light source on one side and your external microphone on another side you can put them on the same side I just do that so that um, it's just easier for me to set it up where I have everything where it has its own place. Okay, so this is um, an example of a 60 Minutes Lady Gaga interview that I <laughs> took apart. So you can see that <laughs> the microphone. <laughs> this is the this is the day where she like she didn't put any. She was being interviewed by Anderson Cooper and she didn't put any clothes on. She came to the interview and she said, "I just didn't feel like wearing clothes. All I wanted to wear was Steve McQueen boots and eyeliner." I was like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so the microphone that they're using is probably off camera somewhere. It's probably off to the left or right. There, the subject appears l way left of center on this screen, probably in the in the left two thirds of the video area. You've got your light source off to one side, and they the the candles that are in the back <laughs> are not lighting her face. <laughs> I mean, that's but the as you can see on the right side of her face is much lighter than the left side of her face. So that's so. They're giving you like a visual cue saying, you know, the candles are back there and that's consistent with where the light source is coming from on her face, but those candles obviously aren't lighting her. And they do add to the whole witchy perspective. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's totally about mood in this. Yeah. And the, the lines coming from her eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've heard of looking daggers at 
<laughs> That's really overdoing. But Anderson Cooper is just sitting off there, and they're just, you know, having a conversation. Anderson Cooper and Lady Gaga. Um, if you're looking to invest, if you feel like, okay, I'm going to be getting into some production with my smart device, um, you're gonna, if you're going to be doing this on a regular basis, you're going to need a few really handy gadgets that you can pick up for not that, they're not that expensive. The first is a tripod mount for your smart device, so you can use any tripod, um, and it just clips, I don't have one here today, but it clips on to the side of your iPhone, and you can just... You can just put it right on a tripod, and those are just 20 bucks, and you can order them from anywhere. If you're going to be, if you, say you're trying to interview a lot of people in concert venues, that's one place where there's always low light situations. I suggest investing in an LED light panel. Those can be handheld. You can have them on a tripod. Um, you can put them off to one side, set them up, on, set them up on a tripod, and. Um, shoot really well there's they come with all the I mean there's a huge diff, a huge range of quality of light panels and you can get them for with all different kinds of color temperatures and if you have if you are looking to buy one and you have a question about color temperature um, come to me and we can talk about what kind of LED light panel is best for your situation and then the audio recorder that I use that I think is um, the best bang for your buck is the H it's called an H4N zoom and it's got a stereo condenser microphone built in. It's got two XLR inputs that you can put on, put a different shotgun microphone in or a lapel microphone in. Um, and the quality is really, really good. There's no, sometimes with um, audio recorders, especially the older ones, one of the problems is that it records into everything a, a very high pitched hiss. That was just part of the development of audio recorders, but this one is really doesn't have that, and it records audio really well and really consistently. Something, yeah. I just want to clarify: if you're going to use a separate audio recorder, yeah, can you just plug that into your iPhone, or do you need? Is there another step? No. So if you ha have decided to go the route where you are, you really need high quality audio, and you need it in addition to your to the video that you're taking on your iPhone, you need software on your computer to be able to download and deal with both the video and the audio that you'll be working with for editing. Um, the editing software that we use in this office is Premiere. You could also use Final Cut if you know a little bit about Final Cut. The only thing you'll have to do when ma is when dealing with the separate media types is in your editing software, you'll have to match the sound to the video. And that is not that difficult. It <coughs> sounds really involved, but if you got, if anyone in here is going to start going into creating your own segments with using a really bare bones setup like your smart device and an, uh, and an audio recorder, I can help you get set up. It doesn't take, it doesn't take that long. Um, some of the cool recording just uh, voice recording apps for your phone if you're just trying to get like a sound bite. Um, you can use Quick Voice, which is free with an option to upgrade. Call Recorder, which is really cool, but also a little bit creepy. You can, um, while you're on the phone with someone, if you're um, like on the phone, I don't, I don't even know. I don't want to say anything that's going to be illegal because you have, to, you have to tell people before you just start rec recording a call. Here, here in DC, the law is you don't. And you you don't have to. Yeah, it from state to state. Yeah, only one person needs to consent. So if you yeah. want to record, you can. Just I think New York is a two consent. Two two yeah. As far yeah. as you're in DC, that's the law that counts. But if you travel yeah. to another state, you need to know what the state's law. Right. So, no, go ahead. What if you're calling someone in New York? The, the, the DC. No, the DC rule. If you're making the call from here. I mean, you may feel ethical obligations to tell them what you're doing or whatever, but that. <laughs> <laughs> so call recorder um, will record the call, and you'll be able to access the file later, download it to your um, computer. One, um, if, you're, if you really want to get into some um, better kind of audio mixing, or you recorded someone, and there's a heating 
you can hear the heating vent in the background and there's like small kids chattering and running around in the background. You can get GarageBand for iPhone um, and it's $5 but it comes with a lot of the similar controls and functions that GarageBand on your Mac has. Um, they also have GarageBand for Android now. And you can uh, play around with effects and I would say use them minimally only to that if you were in like a really echoey room you can dampen the sound that's an effect or you can um, enhance the volume or the gain you can um, take out some some minimal background noise but um, I would be careful the more changes and effects that you apply to any kind of audio the um, greater the quality decreases at each time and the quality of the file on an iPhone is extremely minimal to begin with, so try not to create a file in which you'll have to make multiple changes. Um, I, uh, the app that Monica, that, that you suggest, or no, uh, Nicole, sorry, that you suggested earlier to edit video is a really great app. Um, if you want another app that's not free um, and it has um, a, a full other range of effects that you can use, iMovie is also now available for download, similar to the way GarageBand is. And if you're used to using iMovie at all on your Mac, it works in a really similar way. And then the last app is called Pixorial. And one of the problems in transferring video from one phone to another or sending it via email is that it compresses the video automatically. This, uh, this app allows you to transfer and upload HD video and send it in the email, which can be really helpful. And that's it.